All You Need to Know, the Bloomberg Quint podcast that prepares you for the day's business. Good morning and happy Monday to you. This is the All You Need to Know podcast on Bloomberg Quint and I'm Alex Matthew. Now, there's lots that happened over the weekend, but perhaps the most worrisome is the rate at which COVID-19 cases are rising. In the 24 hours to Sunday morning, over 64,000 cases were added, taking the total to 21.5 lakh. That means India has added over 5 lakh cases in just the last 10 days. The best you can do is to ensure that both you and your family take all the necessary precautions. Stay safe. The other big update over the weekend will have all the defense-oriented stocks buzzing in trade today. Defense Minister Rajnath Singh announced restrictions on the import of 101 weapons and military platforms, including light combat helicopters, transport aircraft, conventional submarines and cruise missiles. The restrictions will be progressively implemented between 2020 and 2024, but most of them, that's 69, will kick in by December this year. Further, he said that the Defence Ministry has bifurcated the capital procurement budget for 2020-21 between domestic and foreign capital procurement routes. A separate budget head has been created with an outlay of nearly 52,000 crore rupees for domestic capital procurement in the current financial year. My colleague Hormuz will give you a sense of the stocks that you need to watch out for today in the second leg of this podcast. The Union Cabinet is expected to soon take up a proposal for setting up a corporation to widen sources of capital for infrastructure financing. It will be called the Credit Guarantee Enhancement Corporation. India requires an investment of 111 lakh crore rupees in infrastructure over the next five years to sustain a healthy economic growth, according to a report of the Task Force on a National Infrastructure Pipeline. The new corporation is being thought of as one of the ways to mobilize funds for this purpose. It's not a new concept and it was, in fact, spoken about first in the budget for 2019-20. Now, most of you will know by now about the terrible tragedy in Khorikod in Kerala that took place on Friday evening. A Boeing 737 Air India Express flight from Dubai skidded on the runway after touching down and broke apart while trying to land. At least 18 people have lost their lives and more than 100 were injured, with some in critical condition. The Khorikod runway is built on a hill, and it turns out that Indian authorities ignored at least two recommendations in the past decade to install a safety system on such airstrips. Meanwhile, Arun Kumar, who is the Director General of Civil Aviation, has said in a television interview that the initial information suggests that the plane touched down too far along the airstrip. In other news, Prime Minister Narendra Modi yesterday launched a financing facility of 1 lakh crore rupees under the Agriculture Infrastructure Fund for agri entrepreneurs, startups, agri tech players, and farmer groups for post harvest management and nurturing farm assets. The Prime Minister also released the sixth installment of 17,100 crore rupees to more than 8.5 crore farmer beneficiaries under the Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samman Nidhi scheme. In international markets this morning, only two of the three early rises in the Asia-Pacific region were open and both of them were in the green. And with that, it's over to Hormuz Fatakia for the trade setup for the day in India. Morning, Hormuz. How are we looking at the start of Monday morning? Good morning to you, Alex, and to our listeners as well. Come Friday, nearly all of the Nifty 50 companies will have reported their June quarter earnings. And speaking of earnings, Sipla's numbers surpassed consensus estimates led by a strong performance in its India and emerging markets business. The company has also managed to achieve a net debt-free status. Staying with the pharma space, it was a strong quarter for DV's laboratories as well, with the company reporting a record sales, EBITDA and profit. 
Higher volumes and better sales realizations were the key factors behind the numbers. Bata, in its post-earnings press release, has said that it is continuing to focus on cost optimization in its retail stores, factories and drive efficiency in its value chain. The footwear maker reported a net loss for the June quarter. Affil India will be the other company in focus with a healthy growth in its top line and bottom line with its India business witnessing nearly 40% growth over the previous year. Other companies that will react to earnings reported post-market hours on Friday and over the weekend include DCP Bank, Amber Enterprises, Siemens, Amara Raja Batteries, Shilpa Medicare, amongst others. On to today's action now and three nifty companies, Power Grid Corporation, Shree Cement and Titan will be reporting numbers today. Some non-index names, Bank of Baroda, Coach and Shipyard, Equitas, HEG, IPCA Labs, KC International, TTK Prestige and Vmart Retail will come out with numbers today. Defence stocks like Bharat Electronics, BEML, Hindustan Aeronautics, Bharat Dynamics and Cochin Shipyard will react to Defence Minister Rajnath Singh's tweets which Alex discussed earlier in the piece. Saudi Aramco is still working on a deal to buy stake worth $15 billion in Reliance Industries. Bloomberg News has reported this quoting Aramco CEO Amin Nasser. Pharma company FDC has approved a share buyback worth close to 100 crore rupees. The buyback price of 450 rupees a share is a 34% premium to Friday's closing price. Brokerages continue to remain bullish on Mahindra and Mahindra post its first quarter earnings. Some of them like CLSA and JP Morgan have raised their price targets on the stock. CLSA has raised its target to 730 rupees from the earlier 605, while JP Morgan now sees a target of 700 rupees from the earlier 625. As per Bloomberg data, 36 out of the 42 analysts tracking the stock have a buy recommendation, 3 of them have a hold, and 3 of them have a sell recommendation. India's benchmark indices, though mostly range bound last week, managed to post a weekly advance. A thing to note in today's session will be the DII flows data. While the FII flows have been inconsistent owing to several large deals taking place through the week, domestic investors have remained net sellers throughout the last five trading sessions. You can get more on all these stocks in our All You Need to Know copy on BloombergQuint.com. And with that, I wish you all a happy week ahead and it's back to you, Alex. Thanks, Hormuz. And as always, thank you all for listening in. This is Alex Matthews signing off. Have a great day and an even better week ahead. I hope you enjoyed listening to All You Need to Know. Did you know that you can listen to this show on the IVM Podcast app? On the IVM Podcast app, along with this, we have a number of other shows which you think you'll enjoy. Listen to Cyrus Says with Cyrus Brocha as the host. Listen to Pesa Vesa with Anupam Gupta. The Scene and the Unseen with Amit Varma or Shunya One hosted by Shiladiti Mukhopadhyay and myself. Check out the IVM Podcast app to get more talk content that you will enjoy.